When Matthew West's name was called as the winner of this year's Dove Award for Songwriter of the Year, it was no surprise. He's not only a hit songwriter, he's a story collector, and the poignant stories that he has compiled from hundreds of thousands of listeners across the world have formatted much of his artist career. But what happens when you start taking inventory of your own personal life? Well, when you're a songwriter like Matthew, your songs get personal, as exampled on his latest recording, All In. Sitting down at Capitol Records, his label home in Nashville, the singer, songwriter, husband, and father shared what it means for him to be all in at home and on the road and on this episode of CCM Magazine's Features on Film. I'm your host, Andrew Greer. I don't think there would be any question about Matthew West's career that songs have been the pivot point for that. And I think about this last record in the title, All In, and I think about what it means. I don't think anyone would question either, if you look at the trajectory of your career over the past 10 years, that you have been all in in your career. But I'm curious, has that come, like, especially as you've thought about what is it to be all in, not just in my career, but in different areas of my life, do you think being all in in your career, has that come at the expense of something or someone that has been important to you? Like, was that part of the reorientation? I'm sure at times it has come at the expense of those closest to me. Mm. I mean, you can't, um, you can't pursue a career or a passion wholeheartedly and um, not wind up looking back and saying, gosh, there was a season where I didn't put this, this part of my life first, mm -hmm. you know? Whether, I mean, I immediately would point to you know, my relationship with my best friend, my wife, mm -hmm. you know, where mm -hmm. there's those recalibrating seasons where she's, where she's got to go, hey, yeah, you've got to, like, you've got to play a few less shows mm -hmm. right now. Like, mm -hmm. we need to, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think, and strangely, family became a central theme in the writing of this record mm -hmm. all in. Mm -hmm. and, and what was ironic about, I think this is like my eighth album, and I wrote a record called All In, and mm -hmm. I was thinking a little bit like, Lord, haven't I already gone all in for you? Like, why is this the idea now? Mm -hmm. And and so I I tried not to be offended by my own idea, <laughs> yeah. but then I began to dive in and just tried to be open and honest with myself to say, okay, what are the areas of my life where God's saying he's calling me to go all in like never before? And Am I willing to look at those areas and humbly acknowledge that there's deeper depths that he wants to show me? What I began to realize is that every single one of us, at any given point in our lives, there is an area of our lives where if we ask that question mm -hmm. and we're ready for the answer, the Lord would show us an area where he's calling us to go all in. Mm -hmm. And so really, not surprisingly, a lot of the songs on this record dealt with my desire to go all in as a husband and a champion for my wife. She's championed me this whole time, but mm -hmm. like, do I like raise her up? Do mm -hmm. I cha champion her passions? And you know, my relationship with my daughters, I think that's an aching like um, fear of future regret mm -hmm. that like, you know, me playing a hundred concerts a year, like what's that gonna do sure. to them, right? Sure. And 20 I've, years from now. Yeah, yeah 20 years from uh, now. Like I've made sweeping changes uh -huh. in response to those uh -huh. too. So it's not just being challenged and then moving on from it. It's sure. like being challenged and then what's the, what's the change that's gonna come from that challenge? Yeah, do, what do you feel like, if you could look back over the past couple of years, what do you feel like is the biggest change that you're like, hey, this is different? Well, I mean, one of the biggest changes is we we homeschooled our daughters for four years, and that that was, I mean, that was monumental. Yeah, we've now put them in uh, school because uh -huh. they couldn't spell their own names. But <laughs> no, I'm yeah, just kidding. I'm kidding. and they couldn't talk to adults. And <laughs> yeah, they <couldn't. laughs> they, they, like, I mean, yeah. we were but whatever. <laughs> we were basically messing them up big time. No, no. Uh, but great merch girls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they knew how to sell merch. <laughs> But they couldn't spell their own name. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, that would, uh, my wife, you know, mm -hmm. did an amazing job. Mm -hmm. I was like the principal, you know, <laughs> the enforcer. But uh, we we basically, that was a huge choice for us mm -hmm. as a family. Just feeling like, you know, maybe our family doesn't need to look like every other family. Mm -hmm. And how do we do this? How You know, and it's a real challenge, too, because you feel like if I was just a, a pop singer or something, like, I think the added like confusion sometimes is 
Lord, I feel like I'm doing what you've called me to do. So when I'm on stage, I like, I wouldn't go on tour if it was just to entertain people. Mm -hmm. Like I'm literally going on stage to like, because I feel like there's an eternal value to it. Mm -hmm. Like there's a reason for it. And so um, I would always feel conflicted. Mm -hmm. and, and it got to the point where I felt like I couldn't fully be anywhere. Mm -hmm. So I'd be on stage, but feeling guilty that I wasn't with my family. Mm -hmm. And then I would be home, but feeling like I wasn't like, that uh, calling kind yeah, of it's just like being... and that's no way to live uh -huh. and so <clears throat> so i do feel like for that season um it was right to to homeschool the kids for four mm -hmm. years and um that was probably one of the biggest changes that we made and it it was a game changer mm -hmm. i mean the relationships that were forged i mean you already have a close relationship hopefully with your wife sure, and your children yeah but, but being on a bus together and yeah seeing the world and i mean mm -hmm. The most vulnerable songwriting, at least on, on the record All In, that's been said a lot. And, and I think you've said that too, that this is some of your most vulnerable songwriting. Which, if you think about, I mean, I think in Nashville especially, like, you aren't just known as an artist, but really a storyteller and a storyteller through songs. And if you think about the other artists that have recorded your songs, songwriting is a part of the fabric of who you are and what you contribute. So to say these are the most vulnerable songs or maybe most personal, does that mean you were just scratching the surface before this, or is it because life has been a teacher maybe more recently than in the past? Yeah, you know, it's funny. Like, I, I don't even know that I would agree that these songs are somehow more vulnerable mm -hmm. than others. I guess in some ways they are, but I, I'd like to think that as I look back at you know, I, I'm not, I don't write a song to conjure up something. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not, I, I'm so passionate about songwriting that, like, I would, it, that's just, like, mm -hmm. it's it's breathing for me. It's really important, mm -hmm. and it's, um, I, I would be offended by myself if I <laughs> sat down to, you know, I, I, I just don't, when I hear a song that I think feels like, artificial mm -hmm. like I, I just want to run from it and so that's a challenge for me personally i like in everything whether mm -hmm. i'm writing a song for somebody else now there's times where you write a song and you're like man that feels like a hit yeah 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 there's nothing wrong with that yeah. i like to feel that way but it, it um but i still always want it to be authentic mm -hmm. i think if if these songs on the latest record are more vulnerable in any way it's probably that for the last several years i've primarily written songs that came from a direct inspiration which was somebody else's story mm -hmm. that's been a big part of my platform and i've loved every second of it and yet um coming into the writing of this record i had just finished releasing a book mm -hmm. and something clicked while i was writing that book where um without even planning to i wound up diving into my own story on a lot um, um, on more on, on deeper levels, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Than I thought, and the book wound up being um, just me kind of peeling back some layers. And so I think that was very fresh in my mind and in my heart when I then turned to pick up a guitar and begin writing songs for the new record. Mm -hmm. And and so the vulnerability I think comes from that a lot. And um, there's a song on the record called "The Beautiful Things We Miss" that to me sort of captures some of the vulnerability of what we just talked mm -hmm. about, about the fear of future regrets mm -hmm. from a family man mm -hmm. standpoint and not wanting to miss what really matters. Um, so I, I would hope that as I continue to write songs that I would be better at being vulnerable. Sure, and more and more authentic because as you are peeling those layers back, as you are taking inventory. I mean, but was that scary at first when you realized, okay, I'm taking inventory of my own life and these, because like you said, you have written a lot, you have done a lot of storytelling, a lot of narrating it, as an observer of other people's stories and their inspirations and, and really have a way of sure, relating, I'm sure, to some degree, your own life in their stories, but you're still telling their stories. So when you first start like, writing an autobiographical yeah is it's it like whoa yeah it's a little like um I, i'll tell you i mean so i collected and i'm still collecting 
I've collected like 40,000 stories. Hmm. No joke. Like I have them and I read them. And a lot of times my songs are my letter back to that person. Mm -hmm. Doesn't get much more vulnerable than somebody saying, hey, I want to tell you my story of addiction or I want to tell you the story of my daughter that was killed by a drunk driver and how I've had to learn how to forgive this person <laughs> if I'm going to survive. So in a lot of ways, I've been actually inspired by the people who shared their stories with me. By the way, I'm not, those weren't just hypotheticals. Sure, those are those are real. people who I can picture their face now. Mm -hmm. I know their name. I've been a part of their life. Um, and I've written songs for them. Mm -hmm. I think they've challenged me to be able to do the same in my own life. Like the fact that somebody could write about some of the most wounded parts of their story uh -huh. and then send it to me. Yeah, share it. Like, uh, I, what? You know, mm -hmm. that was very, um, I think that's why I'll always have that be a part of my creative process. But it did have a residual effect on my own. It challenged me. It was like, hey, are you willing to do what you're encouraging other people to do? Yeah, that's are you, what I was Are curious. you willing to yeah. be authentic? you know, as authentic as you can be, as vulnerable as you should be uh -huh. with your own story. And that's what I'm working on. And so I think it was a bit of a, you know, shifting gears a little bit to go from telling somebody else's story to looking at my own. But those people that wrote to me kind of helped me do it. You uh -huh. know, it's like, and I think there's a lot of that, like, not to steal from a buzz term of the world today, but me too. I yeah. think mm -hmm. there's something very interesting about how isolated people feel that when one story is brought into mm -hmm. the light, I think there's so many other people going, oh, okay, so it's okay for me to do that. Mm -hmm. I think this is why the Bible talks a lot about the power of our testimony, mm -hmm. right? Is mm -hmm. because you're, you're fighting back isolation with every story you tell. Mm -hmm. And I feel like my platforms become largely about that. I just don't want to lose my own story in the middle of all the others and sure. see how God wants to use that. Well, because I think to be in community means that we also have to come to the table and share. It's I think it's easy to hide in other people's transparency oh, yeah. because to be supportive of that, say yes, you know, you no judgment, share whatever, you know. That is a good thing, but if I also don't reciprocate, then it's not community. It can be support, right? but it's not community. That's a great point, and that's perhaps the, the corner that I've mm -hmm. turned back towards. And so, you know, and, and, in, and in that way, I guess you could look at just my songwriting journey as being, mm -hmm. it's become a two-way conversation, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. really neat. You know, it's like this, it's kind of this old school game of telephone, you know, and <laughs> my first songs and albums were really telling a lot of my story and then I had this idea and began collecting other people's mm -hmm. stories and then writing back to them and mm -hmm. and now now it's all now it's all together yeah. now it's like this you know there's stories told on this album that describe other people's journey of going all in and then very much a part of me deciding to go you know what I don't have it all together mm -hmm. here's some areas where I've failed mm -hmm. and here's some areas where I'm feeling challenged and if I lead with that, like you said, come into the table. And, uh, and honestly, even what you just said is, is an image that's hard for me to like feel settled in. Like hmm. what image? Well, like I've always like, just to be totally honest, like the idea of like, um, church groups, like, mm -hmm. you know how churches are real big on like small groups, sure, yeah, community groups. And like, man, I just have like I've avoided those mm -hmm. and I, I should be a huge champion of them and I am for you sure right, right? yeah but, but I think there's something about having a public platform that like you feel like you can't like you can be yourself but maybe you can't yeah you feel like maybe it would be some kind of exposed yeah like so like marriage couples groups and stuff yeah. like that and my wife's like come on and I'm like ah <laughs> I think these people they might want a picture with me, but I don't know that they want to know, uh -huh. you know, what really drives you nuts about me. Yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, let's find other ways to, like, <laughs> uh -huh. deal. It's Well, it's a line. Yeah, it's a line yeah. that, like, until you kind of dive in. I mean, it is the all-in imagery. It is the image of that album cover. It's like, well, uh, to test that out, I mean, I was talking with a friend last night who doesn't want to test that out, 
who has some significant family issues going on and is not interested because of what can happen in community. There can be the chit chat and there can be the, you know, the gossip train uh, slash prayer request, you know, line. There can be all that, but we still have to exercise some element of surrender in that, right? To say, yeah. I'm gonna still submit myself to community and yeah, there's gonna be some hairy stuff about it. Yeah, I mean, I, and that's and that's really the, that's the part about it is uh -huh. to, for me to go even to say to you, yeah, there's certain mm -hmm. groups I'm not comfortable in or whatever. But you're right. You, it's like the same thing with the songwriting. Mm -hmm. It's like, gosh, you know, is this a conversation I should just be keeping with internal, or mm -hmm. is this one that I should share with the sure, world? Sure. And I think to put yourself out there is really what you're talking yeah. about. And mm -hmm. obviously, it's easier said than done. Yes, so it's like always. your friend's situation. I mean. You know what, if they have concern or fear, it's probably well-founded. It's probably mm -hmm. because they know some of the people in that circle sure. and what their tendency might be. Sure. And, you know, I think that's the challenge is how do, you, how do you still assume the responsibility of being authentic and real, let the consequences be what they may, but at the same time seeking out those. I was having a conversation with my oldest daughter yesterday, and because one of her friends, you know, is kind of starting to show some colors that, hey, where we've been able to say, now, would a true friend do that? Mm -hmm. And she's going, well, well, no, you know. And, and I, I was just trying to encourage her that it's like, you're, you're going to have a lot of friends, mm -hmm. but there may only be a mm -hmm. few of those, like, locking arms kind of friends. Mm -hmm. And... That's what I found in my own mm -hmm. life, at least, you know, especially in a public platform. It's sure. like there's a lot of acquaintances and there's a mm -hmm. lot of friends. But, you know, where is that safe place where I can, you know, kind of go to some deeper depths, you know? And that and honestly for me is like I had two friends that we just we would meet for biscuits every week. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of them moved away, which has been really hard. But like we would we that was that was the thing, man. And I, I do feel like we have to have that in mm -hmm. our lives, like where we can kind of dig a little bit deeper with those chosen few. We're going to find that safe place for you. If you want to host a small group for Matthew West, you can call <laughs> 615. I okay. would love that. Yeah, I'd love to join <laughs> yeah, your small I bet, group. I bet you would. I just started um, sweating. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We got him finally. Well, I was trying to get you to cry, but that might be the next one. Maybe you uh, and me. Yeah. You and me could be our, our own. Yeah. Really small group. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. This and, and, and your friend that you were talking <laughs> yeah, to. Yeah, right? my I, friend. I right. hope I can help your friend. <laughs> yeah, find a small group. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, I don't like small groups or people. Yeah. Um, the lyric, turns out safe, is just another word for regret. Have you, do you feel like you've lived some of your life trying to be, quote unquote, safe? Absolutely. I mean, honestly, that, I feel like the line... Um, that's in the song All In. Mm -hmm. And I feel like All In is like a second cousin to um, a song that that I had out a few years back called The Motions, mm -hmm. which is, I mean, the heartbeats are in rhythm with each other. Mm -hmm. The lyrics and the melody and the titles are all different, but same heartbeat, mm -hmm. same rhythm. And it's basically this fear of having regrets when it's all said and done. This this desire to run the race well, what does that look like? Mm -hmm. And really, I mean, my brother said to me once, he's like, you know, your songs, some of your songs are like a hug and a punch. And I was like, <laughs> like, what do you mean? He's like, well, they're like encouraging, but like some of them kind of like hit you. Yeah, And, and it's like, well, wait a minute, you know, mm -hmm. how, are you, how are you doing? You know what I mean? Songs like do something. It's mm -hmm. like, and there are songs. I, I joked with the audience one night that, one of my prayers I felt like the Lord gave me before my concerts is just the image of arrows and praying that my songs would shoot like arrows hmm. straight to people's hearts. But one night I started smiling in the middle of one of my songs and I was like, I had the image of boomerangs. Hmm. And I was like, <laughs> I've prayed for arrows, but the Lord's given me boomerangs. Hmm. And some of these songs, they go out into the crowd and then they it's shoot right, right back around and, and hit me upside the head. Mm -hmm. And all in is one of them. Safe is just another word for regret. And so for me, it's been about like, okay, I've built a nice career. 
mm-hmm. uh, as a singer? Um, where have I gotten safe? Where have I stopped taking chances? One of the reasons why I flipped my creative process upside down was because of that. Was mm. That's why I started collecting people's stories. Because mm-hmm. I was starting to feel like I had figured out the recipe. Huh. Oh, I can... Oh, wait, so when I do this, this song's a hit. Mm-hmm. And then, oh, that's good. And then I kind of liked the, how that felt to have mm-hmm. a hit. And so I'm going to chase that. I'm going to have this, right? And, and mm-hmm. so, again, back to me wanting to fight against anything inauthentic or mm-hmm. conjured. So I'm just going to flip my whole creative process upside down instead of getting comfortable. Mm-hmm. And that's worked for me. It's helped me both creatively, but also in my spiritual journey, I want to be willing to do that as well. To say, okay, uh, how can I be more generous? How can I give Mm -hmm. more? How can I take some risks that don't make sense? Um, Yeah, from a practical. Right, and not taking risks for the sake of taking risks, Uh but maybe more, a better way to say it is just saying, Lord, okay, remove, am I willing to pray that prayer? Like, I'm pretty comfortable right now. Uh-huh. Like, Lord, is there, what's something big you're calling me to that I would be afraid to do that I should do anyways? Uh-huh. And it's not about jumping out of an airplane and sure. going skydiving. Sure. I mean, those it's can be purpose. images of it. Yeah. But it's purpose. Purpose it's risks. Yeah. Things that have eternal value mm-hmm. that frighten you. It's like mm-hmm. Mother Teresa saying, you know, giving isn't giving until it costs you something, mm-hmm. until it hurts. Mm-hmm. Right? And I'm like, gosh, what does that look like for mm-hmm. me? Because I, I can give in safe ways, but... What's a big give? What could I do mm-hmm. that's, you know? So, so yeah, I think I want to mm-hmm. fight against safe, whatever that means, creatively, spiritually, you know. I think anyone who might be watching this or might have heard some of the themes and messages that you're talking about, this all-in idea, and then to think, okay, you want to be all-in with your career, all-in with your family, all-in with your spirituality and your faith and mm-hmm. all this stuff. Like, is that even feasible? To be, I mean, there's probably some people that go, I mean, they shut down at the idea of that. Is it feasible to be all in in every area? Hey, th- <laughs> this is the thing that I've, this is the thing that I've beat myself up over um, way too many times in my life uh-huh. as a preacher's kid who somehow let the message of guilt um, into my ears way more than the mm-hmm. message of grace. Mm-hmm. Not by my parents' design, but just for whatever reason, mm-hmm. that's been a big part of my story. And that's why I write a lot. Like, I look over some of my lyrics, and I write a lot about hearing voices. Mm-hmm. I'm like, man, people, if they look too close, they might think I'm crazy, yeah. you know? <laughs> but I think this is where I'm coming to a point where and it'll always be a, a struggle because Satan never stops. But that thought of, like, um, trying to run a perfect race, uh-huh. I think I can honestly sit here and go like, I, I think I figured out that perfect isn't the goal, hmm. right? I, I want to I wanna do what Paul said at the end of his life where he, he said he finished the race. He didn't say he won it. Mm-hmm. He said he kept the faith, mm-hmm. you know, he fought, he fought the fight. He didn't say, so none of those, mm-hmm. it, it's interesting. Like I think that scripture is about, it's really a victorious statement, but it it's is. not this kind of victory. It's like, it's a surrendered victory. It's this kind of it, yeah. You know, I mean, it's yeah. like being raised up by being laid low. Even better, yeah. And that's and I think, so I would say that to me is the goal. And I think that's that's a life lived all in is uh-huh. being willing to ask the Lord daily, search me, know me, show me any unclean way, and renew a right spirit in me. Mm-hmm. And then show me those areas, you know, like I said earlier, it's like I feel like on any given day, there's going to be a different area where, where I haven't been going mm-hmm. all in. And so is it possible? Man, we are human <laughs> and we are messed up and it's tough to like, you know, I think it's possible to pray that prayer daily. And I think it's possible to get to the end of this life and, and be so much more grateful for the grace mm. that God gives us in the moments that we haven't gone all in. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I don't want to name drop, but um, I got to have root beer with Billy Graham before he passed <laughs> away. And I remember asking, I asked him if he had any regrets. And I just thought, I don't know, of all the questions I could ask him, I was thinking, I was like, 
because if Billy Graham has regrets, yeah, then it's we can all have regrets. Yeah, right? maybe we have it's grays around yeah, our regrets. And you know what? And he yeah. shared with me uh -huh. what his regret was. Mm -hmm. And guess what it was? It was the time that he spent away from his family mm -hmm. while he was ministering. Mm -hmm. Well, guess why he, he was telling me that? Because he knew my line of work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he was speaking straight to me. But what he said, he's like, I know God's given me grace for that. But if I could go back, I would do that differently. And I'm like, you know what? That is going to be the story of all of us. Mm -hmm. I know God's given me grace for that. And oh, that we could look behind us at every area where we fail to go all in and say, I know that God's given me grace for that. Mm -hmm. Sure, you'd change some things, but if we can move forward with that mentality, sure. and that's what I'm trying to do. You yeah. know, I know that God's given me grace for that, yeah. that thing, that safe, that day that I didn't take the chance I knew I should have. If grace was a kingdom, I stopped at the gate. Thinking I don't deserve to pass through after all the mistakes that I made. Oh, but I heard a whisper as heaven bent down. I said, child, don't you know that the first will be last and the last get a crown? Now I'm just a beggar in the presence of a king. I wish I could bring so much more. But if it's true that you use broken things, then here I am, Lord, I'm all yours. Pages of history, they tell me it's true that it's never the perfect, it's always the ones with the scars that you use. It's the rebels and the prodigals, it's the humble and the weak, all the misfit heroes. You chose tell me there's hope for sinners like me. And now I'm just a beggar in the presence of a king. I wish I could bring so much more. But if it's true that you use broken things, then here I am alone. kingdom with gates open wide and there's a seat at the table just waiting for you so come on inside